Hello, I'm John Sargent and welcome to Argumental, the show where the finest minds in comedy debate the biggest issues facing mankind. Is binge drinking really such a problem? Are mobile phone masks dangerous? And what exactly is Sienna Miller for? <laughs> Here to argue such hot topics and others like them are in the red corner, team captain Marcus Brigstock and his special guest, Richard Herring. <laughs> And opposing them in the blue corner, Captain Rufus Hound and his special guest, Hugh Dennis. <laughs> OK, let's kick off with round one, where we gut and fill it, a big issue of the day. Tonight we're looking at this. Obesity. Britain's drowning in a sea of gravy and deep-fried lard as we tuck into our favourite dish. Curried fudge with chips in a bucket, muffin tops and bingo wings, served with a portion of fried rice. We've gone large in every sense of the word. But the topic I'd like the teams to argue is this. The obesity epidemic is not a problem. Starting us off and supporting the statement is the red team captain, Marcus Brigstock. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sit down. Thank you very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen, what a delicious thing curried fudge is. Now, much has been said about the obesity epidemic, but I believe it was Sir Mix-a-Lot who said, I like big butts and I cannot lie. No, I prefer the captain, nah, my anaconda don't want none unless you got buns, hun. And I think that... ..really... <laughs> ..encapsulates a lot of what my argument is this evening. <laughs> OK, any minute now, you're going to hear from Mr Hugh Dennis over there, one of the many body fascists, a man who is 63 <laughs> years old. But look at him. <laughs> look at him. He takes part in the Tour de France on a regular basis. Why? <laughs> because he's a body fascist and a bully, OK? It's up to the individual choice. If you choose to be obese, fine. That's your business, OK? It's up to you. And who do you want to hang out with? Really? I mean, do you want to spend your time with these Atkins diet freaks? Have you smelt these people? <laughs> All they eat is meat and butter. They smell like dinosaurs. <laughs> Fussy people. Oh, well, I can eat carbohydrates, but I can only eat them on a Wednesday as long as I have a ride Vita and then say I'm sorry and do some self-harm later on. It's <laughs> fine. I want to hang out with people who go, come on, let's go and have a nice big feed up. Who here honestly thinks that a supermodel's got a nice personality? Of course they haven't. That's why they're so ghastly in the face and dead behind the eyes. <laughs> Who wants to hang out with fitness bores as well? These horrible people, yeah, I just done 800 reps down at the gym, yeah, pretty awesome training for the marathon. I'd rather hang out with people who go, do you know what, I once had a whole Stilton. Bang! <laughs> <laughs> Every time you see a fat person, don't scoff at them like this gentleman's about to explain to you. Go over and embrace them. These are the people that read the magazines that say, oh, you're not good enough, you're not pretty enough, oh, you shouldn't go out, look how ghastly you look in a tracksuit. These are people who've gone... Bollocks to all of that. I'm magnificent. <laughs> and if you want final proof, ladies and gentlemen, final proof, try to imagine this, okay? A man in black boots and a tight red suit with a beard, skinny, approaching your children with a sack full of toys. <laughs> He'd need to be on a register, and rightly so. You make him fat, he's Father Christmas, we all love him. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the obesity epidemic is not a problem. Vote, please, with the red team. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Marcus. Next up, it's Hugh Dennis. Unleash the fascist. <laughs> what a load of bollocks. <laughs> Let me put this in context for you. Obesity and its epidemic is a problem. There was a recent clipboard survey in the United States. The results were these. 30% of the respondents said that obesity was the biggest problem affecting their nation. 20% had no view one way or the other. 50% et the clipboard. <laughs> Obesity means less walking. Less walking means more driving. More driving means more oil. More oil means more power for Russia. It means drilling in Alaska. It means the election of Sarah Palin. It means the recession of the Ice Cats. It means recession of the world economy. It means the takeover of Manchester City. It means the sacking of Kevin Keegan. It means the decline of the Honey Bee. And it means everybody gets great A-level results. I'm not quite sure how I put that list together. <laughs> 
But I don't care. You see, I, I don't want to blame obesity for all the evils in the world, but I'm trying to win an argument, so I am going to. <laughs> House prices are falling and grain prices are rising. Do you really want to live in a world where the average semi-detached costs exactly the same as a loaf of Hovis? <laughs> Do you want to live in a world where rice becomes so expensive that the free gift in every packet of Rice Krispies is an AK-47 so you can defend yourself on the way home? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, obesity is a terrible problem. I implore you to vote for the blue team. <clears throat> Thank you, Hugh. Rufus and Richard, do you want to join in? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I think we need fat people. It's important. I think fat people are very funny. Mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing funnier than a fat woman falling out of a hammock. That is the... <laughs> and, uh, the funniest thing in the world. It is. We wouldn't have that anymore. Yeah. If, uh, mm -hmm. if fat... And, and I think, we, you know, we have the Olympics to celebrate physical extremes, yet we don't understand. To actually become a beast is quite difficult. Mm. You have to really push yourself to get there. And you don't get any... You don't get any health benefits, obviously. You don't get the girls like the athletes get, but you really push... To, to have that dedication to eat that much, right. you get to the point where you're so fat you can't even walk anymore, mm -hmm. and you don't think, maybe I should go on a diet now. No, you push on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you eat more. You cannot be suggesting obesity as an Olympic sport. It's an amazing... Why not? It's an amazing, amazing training. training, as Roy Castle said. <laughs> Dedication is what you need, and you no know. donuts are what you need. <laughs> <laughs> Bring me a donut. Isn't that an amazing <laughs> thing to, to die and be so fat that they have to take off a wall of your house and twenty people have to lift you Magnificent. out? Magnificent! Yeah, it's like the it's the closest you get to being a Viking king. That's right. <laughs> what a way to go! At least you've committed. Isn't it like if, I'm not saying everyone should be obese, but if a few people are I obese, am. they're eating... <laughs> the few people who are obese can eat all the unhealthy foods, leaving there'll be no unhealthy food left, so everyone else will be fit. Exactly. So there won't yeah. be any food left. <laughs> you talk, <laughs> there'll, there'll, you there'll talk. be loads of, like, celery and stuff for you to eat. Yeah. Fat people don't like that shit. Exactly. Cos <laughs> it's horrid. It's little more than a vehicle for mayonnaise. <laughs> Yeah. So your only argument so far is that fat people falling out of a hammock <laughs> are funny. Do we need... Well, no, 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 are they no, any funnier... Are mean... they any funnier than thin people falling through a hammock? <laughs> <laughs> yes, and let me explain why, OK? Sure, you've got the delight of watching a fat person roll out of a hammock and then, if there's time, betting on which way up they'll land. <laughs> to that, and you don't get this with a thin person, you have the pleasure of watching the trees before they go, going... <laughs> <laughs> OK, gentlemen, gentlemen, thank you very much. You've well, heard the on, arguments. No, 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 I'd like no, to know no. which side of this argument you fall on. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, I mean, is obesity a problem? Not for me personally, no. no yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> you can't have a discussion about perfection. Shush. Uh, you've heard the argument, so now it's time for our studio audience to decide which team made the best case. If you think it was Marcus and Richard, hold up your red card. And if you think Hugh and Rufus, hold up the blue card. Vote now. That is unbelievable. <laughs> the other thing is that obesity causes colour blindness. <laughs> So, a victory for the red oh, team. Well oh. done, Marcus and Richard. Yeah. I'm sorry, Richard. No, no, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Next up is Flip Flop, where we find out how well our teams can argue with themselves. I'll give a player a statement which they must argue for until they hear this sound. At which point they must perform a U-turn and argue against it. Then Flip Flop their argument every time I press the buzzer. Richard and Rufus are playing this one. Rufus, you're up first, and I'd like you to argue that mums are better than dads. <laughs> Not a hard thing to do, Sarge, because mums are the best, I think we all know that. Our mums spit us out into the world, and then there we are, mewling and puking. They lift us up, ugly as we are, to their breast. They feed us as we suckle upon them. Uh, I don't know about any men in the room, but there's only one kind of situation where I've had anybody suckling on me, and what I emitted certainly couldn't be described as a nutrient. <laughs> uh, dads are, of course, better, uh, is, is the thing. Um, mums worry about us too much. I got married in Las Vegas at very short notice. When we rang both mums, they were in tears, asking us why we hadn't invited them, whereas when we asked both dads, they went, oh, congratulations. And when we explained we hadn't actually got married yet, they went, oh. 
don't get that with mums. Uh, but what you do get with mums is obviously better, because they are better than dads. Uh, <laughs> women create things uh, like knitting. Uh, <laughs> but who wants knitting, right, chaps? <laughs> I think we've all got enough socks and scarfs. Uh, but can you ever have too many socks and scarfs? Yes, you can. <laughs> the thing about dads is that when you're doing your exams at age 13, your mum brings you up a cup of coffee as you're studying late into the night and goes, look, don't worry about the result, just whatever happens, you try your best. Whereas your dad will come up, knock you out a sly line of Charlie and go, don't tell your mum. <laughs> That is why mums and dads are the best! <laughs>
millions of people, uh, only 12% of them ever really get credit for it. And I think that's a shame. When I say credit, of course, most of them don't need any real credit because they have a massive amount of money, all of which they have earned by kicking a bladder about on a field. And let's not forget, ladies and gentlemen, when you really get down to the mouldy core of this cheesy <laughs> argument, uh, <laughs> that, you know, it's only really the amount of money that keeps people like Wayne Rooney in the game. I mean, if, if he weren't being paid the sort of money he's being paid, he'd be off being a lawyer or a physicist or a <laughs> doctor or something. But no, they've come up with a, a, a payment system which uh, he uses to buy cheese. And let me tell you, folks, <laughs> it's not easy looking after a wag. Let me show you some of the things the wives and girlfriends spend their money on with this next picture. <laughs> <Yeah>? <laughs> You know, they just, they shell out for pricey striped pants for <laughs> themselves and also for their footballing partners. And that's, you know, where the money goes. And that's why we must keep giving them a huge amount of money. As I said to Jimmy Savile, <laughs> who, frankly, is 278 years old, but he's still basically alive. How? Because he's been fixed. Genetically fixed, <laughs> he wrote in to himself, Dear Jim, please could you fix it for me? Jimmy Supple, so stay alive. But you see, were Savile a football player, he would need that money to spend on the cigars that he never ever lights. Why? <laughs> because his lungs are made of tissue and his hair of flammable. Hair. Uh, no, you're not. There we go. <laughs> Thanks, Marcus. And now, opposing that argument for the blue team, it's Hugh Dennis. <laughs> Here's your first picture, and off you go. Now, uh, Premiership footballers do not deserve. <laughs> Every penny they earn. Look, and it's not like the old days, is it? You can, you can tell those are the old days because the football's brown and the <laughs> and the sky is blue. <laughs> <laughs> but now, <laughs> now footballers with their their vast amount of money, they they, they 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 waste it, don't they? They don't deserve it. They waste it. They spend it on hiring people like this man, <laughs> who, who is Cristiano Ronaldo's diving coach. <laughs> That's what he does. He gets him, and they spend it on women. Now... <laughs> the wags. I mean, it's unfair. This one's a bit of a moose. But, what, you know, they're spending their money on pointless, pointless things. Uh, Jewellery, trainers... Uh, that might be an elk. I might have been unfair. <laughs> to Abby Clancy. Anyway, <laughs> there is a huge lake of money, ladies and gentlemen, which Premiership footballers get, which could be used for other purposes, as illustrated by this next uh, slide. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is something about which I feel very strong, and I am very black and white on this problem. <laughs> uh, the wages paid to Premiership footballers are appalling. They're, they're bad for crowds, uh, they're bad for the paying television audience, and like Michael Jackson, uh, it, they're, they're very bad for kids. <laughs> <laughs> it is an appalling, an appalling state of affairs. The football is no better because the people get paid more. Uh, uh, in what world is it right that, that a footballer can earn in a fortnight uh, what a plumber does in a week? Well... <laughs> <laughs> Do you know... <laughs> If they carry on spending football clubs at this rate, there'll be nothing left by Christmas. <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> okay, time for our studio audience to decide who made the best case. Remember, it's red for Marcus, blue card for Hugh. Vote now. Oh, that is. We're gonna make it a blue day. <laughs> It looks like, yes, a win for the blue team. Well done, Hugh. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure it was ever a 
Time now for the celebrity round, and the subject of tonight's debate is this lovely lady. It's Victoria Beckham. Food shunning, nanny screening, star vacuum, <laughs> and one quarter of Britain's favourite couple. <laughs> she is a devoted wife and mother turned stateside non-entity and regular Tom Cruise botherer. But the proposition I want you to argue is this. Victoria Beckham gets a raw deal. Rufus, you're up first. Please convince us that Victoria Beckham does get a raw deal. <laughs> Victoria Beckham does get a raw deal. And who does she get the uh, raw deal from? Well, I'm sorry to break this to you, sisters, but it's women. <laughs> no man has ever said, I can't believe that bitch has married David Beckham. <laughs> Could have been me. <laughs> it was the Buddha who said, your work is to discover your work and then, with all your heart, give yourself to it. Now, I grant you she may not have displayed any talent in her careers as a pop star or... anything else, but <laughs> at least she gave it a go. It can't be easy realising that your karmic destiny is to wear clothes and have your photos taken whilst you're shopping, all the while making it look as though you have had two wasps sting you on the lips. <laughs> By which I mean labia. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever been stung on the labia, but it won't half make you pout. <laughs> so, let's end the bullying. Let's hold the woman up high and stop giving Posh such a raw deal. Vote blue. I'm true. I thank you. Thanks, Rufus, but was he talking a load of rubbish? Richard, what do you think? Yes. Of course he was. Of course he was. Um... Victoria Beckham getting a raw deal. What do you want? She gets more than she deserves. She gets everything she deserves and much, much more. She can't complain about being messed about by the media. This is a woman who courts the media. If she's brewing a reasonable-sized fart, she'll ring up hello so they can be there to take photos of it happening and her celebrity friends smelling it. Uh, <laughs> she, she gets everything that she deserves. Uh, and she has so many careers, and yet she can't really do anything. She's, she's a singer, she's a songwriter, uh, she's an author... She's a fashion designer. Uh, she's a model. Uh, she's an actress. She, she hasn't done... She can't do any of those jobs at all. She has no discernible talent in any of those things. And yet she still has made millions of pounds. She's a shining example to people. She gets much more than she does. And she's married to David Beckham, which is incredible. Have you seen David Beckham in those pants, those Armani <laughs> pants? He's got, like, a conga eel in there. <laughs> it's, uh, it's an, I'd, quite, I'd be happy if I was married to David Beckham. We could go back for that. She's, she's a shining shining example to the young people of Britain. You can have absolutely no talent and still be the richest person in the world. And then even if your own money falls through, she's married to a bloke who luckily has some talent and will keep making money uh, if just by advertising pens. Uh, <laughs> so I have to say that uh, you have to vote red on this one. Victoria Beckham gets much more than she deserves. She certainly does not get a raw deal. Thanks, Richard. Anyone got anything else to add? You're giving her a raw... She gets a very raw deal because she's never given credit for the things that she's got right. You know, like, for example, they are big friends of Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes, but yet they have never become Scientologists. Yes, they have. Of course they have. Look no, at they haven't. It's, a, it, 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 it's largely down to David, who thinks that any follower of Hubbard probably has to live in a cupboard. But that... <laughs> it's, it's, it's down to David, but who she... thinks... I think Scientology is about science and is thus too hard. Yeah. Yeah. But she's never given credit I'm not credit sure about that. this, Victoria. It's got an ology at the end. <laughs> yeah. The only raw thing she gets is her diet. <laughs> Celery and children. Yeah. I, I suspect. Which, which, which you're dipping in mayonnaise for. <laughs> she also gets a raw deal. She got a raw deal, didn't she, when people criticised the naming of her children and said Brooklyn is probably named, you know, after the place in which yes. you know, the child was conceived. Uh-huh. Which... It, that is a family tradition, which began with Victoria's parents. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mean the station? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nobody understood that. No. No. <laughs> that and that is why she gets a raw deal. Yeah. Marcus didn't get that joke, because on the principles of that joke, he would have to call his children high grove and stable. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I only met Rufus's son once. His name's round the back of a skip. So. <laughs> <laughs> so he's a lovely boy. Lovely boy. <laughs> okay.
Thank you, teams. Well, let's find out from our studio audience who made the best argument. It's blue for Rufus and Hugh and red for Richard and Marcus. Vote now. That is lovely in red. <laughs> so that's a victory for the Reds. Well done, Marcus and Richard. <laughs> so the scores then at the end of that round are Richard and Marcus have two and Rufus and Hugh have two. <laughs> Time now for the final quickfire round and a last chance for our teams to prove how argumental they are. <laughs> I'm going to show them a series of pictures. All they have to do is to suggest an argument to go with them. OK, teams, here we go. <laughs> uh, I think this is a pretty good argument that they are serving too much booze at the World Wildlife Fund <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> that is a disgrace. I think it's probably an argument for putting your panda flap slightly lower in the building. <laughs> Is it, uh, I think it's an argument against letting Michael Jackson look after pandas. <laughs> I, I think this is really an argument that if you're going to sleep with a panda in a hotel room and there's any chance of your wife turning up, have a plan. <laughs> <laughs> think it through. Let's have Hank's picture. <laughs> I think it's a fairly good argument for euthanasia. <laughs> Can you argue in favour of an avalanche? <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to argue very loudly and then... <laughs> it's a good argument for a summer holiday. <laughs> OK, the next picture. This is an argument for hope over expectation. <laughs> I'm not so sure. I think this is a pretty strong argument against a quiet Wednesday night drink with Charlotte Church. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I have to say, looking at that, that is a pretty strong argument for being a gay man. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a good argument for the instalment of city centre hammocks. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So, for the final time, it's down to our studio audience to decide which team made the best case. Red for Marcus and Richard, and blue for Rufus and Hugh. Vote now. Oh, I love you! <laughs> there's loads of reds over there. So, I can tell you, it's the blue team that won the round, which means that this week's winners are the blue team. And a purely unscientific count. <laughs> Well done, Rufus Hound and Hugh Dennis. Commiserations to Marcus Brigstock and Richard Herring. Democracy sucks. That's all we've got time for. <laughs> Good night. If you enjoyed Argumental, what do I mean if? Of course you did. Then you can find more Argumental-related treats on website, joindave.co.uk. And next, this very night, it's Mock the Week.